Hello, good people of the internet. My name is Hexo. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It has been almost three years since I left China and I figured it was time to make another video reflecting on the awesomeness that was my life in China. Even though it's been almost three years, so three years in July since I left China, I still think about China and miss China almost every single day. Not that there's anything wrong with Germany or, you know, the rest of the world, but I kind of feel like once you have tasted the forbidden fruit that is China, the rest of the world is a little bit like nothing compares, nothing compares to China. So yeah, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the things that I miss the most about China and also do my makeup at the same time because I haven't done my makeup in ages. So if you're interested in China or you're interested in makeup or both, then please continue watching this video. <laughs> also, you'll see in the background this little Chinese calligraphy writing, drawing script. I don't know what these are called. Um, this says Xiaomi. It's my, <laughs> it's actually my little sister, not Xiaomi like the, the, the brand, the company, but it's actually my little sister's Chinese name. Dami means rice. It's like, it means big rice. And it's the Chinese name for like, you know, the white, the typical white rice that is part of every Chinese person's daily diet. And Xiaomi pretty much means little rice. I'm, I'm, I think it's actually the name of like a different kind of grain that's similar to rice, but um, this is the name that my mom gave, like the Chinese name that my mom gave to my little sister because her Romanian name, her name, name is Miruna, so it has a mi in there, so Xiaomi, that's the, <laughs> I figured it would be cute to have it in the background of this video. Let's get into the China talk and the makeup. Just a little disclaimer, I was raised in Shanghai, so most of these things will probably apply to most major Chinese cities, but some of them may or may not be specific to Shanghai. I don't really know. It's the only city in China I've ever lived in, and things might be a little bit different in other cities in China. But the first thing that I cannot shut up about regarding life in China is how amazing and cheap and efficient their public transportation is. Oh my God. I talk about the Shanghai metro system like it is my soulmate, the love of my life, my reason for breathing and being in this world. I love the Shanghai metro. It is so fast, so convenient. The subway lines are incredibly extensive and spread all the way through like the entire city and also slightly beyond the city's kind of like limits, I guess, or like into the suburbs of Shanghai. I think it costs probably like 12 RMB to get from one end of Shanghai to the other on the subway. So it's really, really cheap. It's really convenient. Something else that's really great is the taxis as well. So yes, the subway is amazing. There's also a lot of buses, but I'm not really a bus girl. So <laughs> I didn't have a lot of experience taking the bus in Shanghai, but anytime you need to get anywhere, you've always got options and they're pretty inexpensive compared to the rest of the world. And I find that just like so convenient, so awesome. Here in Germany, I don't live in the city anymore. So, you know, obviously the public transportation options are gonna be more limited in the countryside compared to the city. But I have been to Hamburg obviously, and I have traveled around or, or, you know, taken the subway in Hamburg. And I have to say that it's a lot more expensive. It's a lot more limited in terms of, you know, there's longer distances between stops and a day card in Germany costs like six euros or seven euros, which is just insane to me. So probably for me, like the best thing about China's public transportation is just how affordable it is. And obviously like as a local, it's different because foreigners living in China tend to get paid more than Chinese people living in China. But as a foreigner living in China on a foreigner's salary, it's um, it's really cheap, it's really effective. And just the, the, so the subway is the best way to get around. But if you need to take a taxi, the taxis are also way cheaper than they are anywhere else in the world that I've ever been. I'm kind of doubtful that there's anywhere in the world that has better public transportation infrastructure and railway systems than China. Maybe Japan, 
might have similarly great public transportation. I don't know much about Korea, but maybe theirs might also be good. But anywhere in the Western world, I, I don't think that <laughs> I just don't think it compares, you know, um, not as much money has been invested into it. And yeah, it's just China totally domi dominates in, in that department. The next thing I miss about China is the street food. No matter where you are, what time of day it is, if you're hungry, you're never gonna be far from a street food vendor or a tiny little hole in the wall restaurant that's gonna serve you some really cheap, really delicious food. Now I gotta say, full disclosure, for a lot of these like small little street food vendors and tiny little hole in the wall shops, the hygiene standards are, are not really up to par compared to what you're probably used to in the West. There's always a little bit of a risk that you're gonna end up in a bad egg sort of place and get a, um, a little bit of food poisoning. But after, you know, 17 years of living in China, I honestly haven't gotten food poisoning very often at all. So, you know, it's it's a possibility, but for the most part, it's it's pretty safe. Just, you know, street food places and small res restaurants might not be as like clean and nice as you would like them to be, but the food is good and it's cheap and it's always available. So let's talk a little bit about what your street food options typically are. So the first one that comes to mind is Tianbing. Tianbing is super, super popular for breakfast. It's basically like, I guess it's kind of like an omelet and they make it on this like super large, like round hot plate. They put a little bit of some spring onions in there and some different spices, some sesame oil and sesame seeds and it ends up just packing such a great flavorful punch. And then they just like fold it like a, like a crepe. And this is like, this is China's favorite breakfast to go. It's, you'll see in the mornings, like these huge lines at Tianbing stalls all over the city. People just stopping to get Tianbing on their way to work. It's nutritious, it's super filling, and it's just a really, really great breakfast option. Another great street food option and super common is definitely gonna be your regular you get these stalls where there's like one man sitting there surrounded by dozens and dozens of these like baskets of, of steamed buns in just towers all around him. And so like they sell so many of them every day and they're super, super cheap and they're so delicious. They come in all kinds of different varieties. Most of the time you'll find like meat buns and vegetable buns, but you also have some places that sell nai huang bao, which is your kind of like typical popular sweet option. Nai huang bao has like a, a yellow custard sort of thing inside it. It tastes, you know, milky and vanilla-y and nice and sweet. If you like noodles, there's your la mian places and your chao mian places. Chao mian I feel like is, is better for on the go cause it's not like it doesn't have soup but la mian does come with soup. So for that you might wanna just sit down in a little restaurant for a few minutes and grab a quick bite. Other snacks I love are like shao mai which it looks like a, it looks like a little little money bag and it has brown sticky rice inside with little pieces of meat and mushrooms usually and the outside is like a like a doughy kind of skin around it xiao long bao are so delicious oh my god xiao long bao are the best they're like small steamed like meat bun type things they're not like bao zi. the skin is like thinner and inside they've got meat in a soup so the way that i would eat them is like Take it, dip it in some like vinegar and then bite it just really carefully and suck all that soup out of it and then put it in your mouth and eat it. Zongzi, another one of my favorites. These are pyramid shaped things inside. I think they're wrapped in like palm leaves or banana leaves. I'm not sure which one, some kind of large leaves. And then they've got brown sticky rice. Again, different fillings. So some of them are with meat. Some of them are with egg yolk. I don't really love the egg ones. I, I tend to stick to the meat, but it's so good. They take this like amazing piece of pork belly with a lot of fat on it and they put it in there and they cook it and all of that fat just melts into the whole thing. It is so, so delicious. Very sticky, very messy, but totally worth it. And then something you're more likely to find at night is Xinjiang barbecue. So, um, this is gonna get a little bit political, but 
this is so not fun to talk about, but uh, you know, I think everyone in the West who's, you know, not living in a state of censorship has heard about China's vanishing Uyghurs from the Xinjiang region, how they're being put into concentration camps, obviously something that I am strongly against and why, you know, even though I love China and I love, loved living there and, and I think it's an amazing place, politically, not a fan. <laughs> really really not a fan of what's going on politically in china but um <sighs> so a lot of uyghurs a lot of people from xinjiang they set up these stalls where they make like you know like skewers of different meats and vegetables the most popular option i feel like is yang rou chuan and the kind of non bread that they make yeah so they've, they'll they'll have lamb they'll have beef mushrooms on sticks and and little potato slices and different veggies and stuff. It's it's really nice and it's a great way to just like grab a quick bite again. And uh, always always remember if you don't like spicy food, <laughs> just tell them. Um, what what do you tell them? Bu bu la 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 because otherwise they'll put like chili powder on it. It'll be super 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 spicy. <laughs> and then of course you've got your favorite drink option. You can find all over the city, which is. Jinju Nai Cha, my my one my one true love that has my heart. There are a few bubble tea places in Germany, so I have had it since I've come here, but you know, in, in Shanghai, it's really just everywhere. So oh, I totally miss that. Totally miss being able to just grab a Jinju Nai Cha any any time I want. <laughs> oh my god, I almost forgot. Cha Ye Dan. These are eggs boiled for a super long time in like soy sauce and aniseed and like a mix of different herbs that makes it really salty and really nice and flavorful. They also sometimes sell quail eggs. I've, I, there's, they're not always available, but some places sell quail egg chai at then and they're so, so good. They're nice and little, little tiny. They're usually like on a, on a kind of stick. But anyways, yeah, I don't know. You know, I feel like the, the Uyghur crackdowns have really been more in full effect since I left China, so I don't even know if there are still Yang Rou Chuan stands in Shanghai or if they've all just disappeared along with the Uyghur population. Who knows? I didn't write this on my list, but I just remembered it. Chinese medicine. Not typically something I like. Most Chinese medicines are super gross, very bitter, and totally disgusting, but there are a few that were very effective and that I kind of grew up taking whenever I had a cough or a flu, namely pipa gao and, oh my God, I totally forgot what this other one is called. Pipa gao and, what is the other one called? Oh my God, I gotta ask my mom, hold on. Mom. Oh, I remembered it. I remembered it all by my lonesome. Banlangan. My mom used to call Banlangan coffee like she would say that it's my little my little coffee that i get to drink whenever i'm sick uh doesn't really taste like coffee but i guess sort of kind of tastes might taste like a like a latte sort of situation i think it's just a medicine for like flu or colds and then pipaka is a sort of brown super sticky syrup that tastes kind of mentholated and it's great for when you have a cough or a sore throat and those are kind of like two herbal medicines that I grew up taking. You can still buy them in, in Germany because they've kind of gotten a, a bit of a cult following, especially Pipakal. So they, you can find them here, but they're obviously more expensive and you have to go to a special like Asian store to find them. Time for eyebrows. I'm, I'm stressed. My eyebrows are always where it goes wrong. <laughs> I made brownies and they're so good but they have so much dark chocolate in them that my hands are literally shaking from all the caffeine that's in them. <laughs> but they're so good. A huge thing that I miss about China is that you can wear whatever you want and look as weird as you want and no one cares. It's so common in China to see people just like going to the corner store in their pajamas. Nobody thinks twice about it. It's not weird or uncommon. It's totally normal. Nobody cares. Nobody judges you. It's it's amazing. I mean, here's the thing, like, especially as a foreigner, people will stare at you. If, if you're dressed eccentrically, people will stare at you. If you look different from the average Chinese person, people will stare at you. You might even have people trying to take photos of you without asking, but 
they don't judge you. That's the difference. Or at least like I've never felt like I am being judged or looked down on for, you know, going out <laughs> to the corner shop in my pajamas or for being dressed weird for like Halloween or whatever. Nobody cares. Like they're really not judgmental about stuff like that because I think there's such a diversity of people doing all kinds of different weird, strange things in China. And, and they're just like, used to it by now. <laughs> I mean, in Shanghai, it's, it's, it's a city of 25 million people. It might be more by now. So nobody cares. They, they just don't care. In Germany, there's definitely an atmosphere of like, you know, you're in Germany now. This is how we do things here. And if you do things differently or you look different or you look strange, people stare at you. People look like they're judging you <laughs> when they're staring at you. Um, there's a lot of like, you know, holding each other accountable and like telling people off if they're doing something differently or telling people off if they're doing something in a strange way. That doesn't really happen in China. They, pe people, don't don't care they like they, they might look at you but they're kind of they kind of mind their own business and they don't really have a problem with you if you're you know out on the street in your pajamas or if it's the middle of summer and it's super hot and you just want to go out in shorts and like a bikini top again they'll stare at you but no one's gonna say anything no one's gonna you know judge you or or just like think less of you so <laughs> it's um I, I find that really nice about chinese culture like the atmosphere in china is that it's just very very non-judgmental and very relaxed and casual and like people do all kinds of weird things like people you'll see like like girls on the metro in the morning with like a nose pore strip on and it's just it's so weird but like no one cares everyone just does whatever they want in well not whatever they want you know but like people do these weird harmless things and and you don't get judged for it whereas in germany i feel like people do judge you if you're behaving different or dressing different or just different in some way. I will say though, there is one caveat to this and namely that is weight. People in China will judge you for your weight and like your looks overall. You're not gonna have like strangers come up to you and call you fat, <laughs> but people will comment on it. They'll like, you know, if you're if you're comfortable with a, a Chinese person, if, if you know a Chinese person pretty well, or they see you pretty often, like if it's your hairdresser or if it's the lady at the checkout at the shop that you always go to and you see them very often, then they kind of get to know you and get comfortable with you. They'll tell you like if they notice that you've gained weight or they'll tell you if they like you have a pimple or something, they, they're not afraid to comment about things like that. I think it's like kind of a way of showing concern for you and like showing that they, they're comfortable with you and you're familiar with them and stuff but it's also like in Chinese society being being fat especially if you're a woman is really like kind of frowned upon Chinese women have a, a big obsession with with thinness and being thin um, but it I think it also happens to men as well like I remember when I was little my my childhood hairdresser his nickname that everyone at his workplace called him was Pangzi, which means fatty. So, uh, you know, that's one thing that's a little, um, yeah, kind of, kind of a negative aspect of Chinese culture is this like being openly critical of people's weight and people's appearance. But then they'll also compliment you on certain things. Like I always got complimented by Chinese people because I have a large nose. And to me, like, I don't, I don't, I don't really like my nose or I didn't used to really like my nose because it's, it's large it's bulbous it's very round but because i don't i don't know I, I feel like chinese society really romanticizes eurocentric features so having like a high nose bridge is really attractive so i have gotten a lot of compliments on from people on like you know they would say that like me the and it's like it's to me it's like it's like an insult but to them it's actually a compliment because it's a typical like european feature most most chinese people will have a very very low um nose bridge so they kind of see it as a good thing <laughs> i'm adding some blue to the middle i'm trying like a spotlight eye type of thing oh that is pretty oh that is a pretty wow Ooh, nice ah, yin love how i'm just teaching you guys random chinese phrases in this video oh my god i just realized something awesome foundation in Chinese is fen di 
and you know how Fenty Beauty was like super big because of their foundation range and stuff. I feel like, I mean, Fenty Beauty's cruelty free, so they're not gonna be able to sell in China unless they decide to not be cruelty free anymore, which I don't see that happening. But if they did want to, I mean, it would be such a perfect name for them, like Fenty Fendi. It's like, but I think Fendi, Fendi, like the, like the fashion brand might already have that that name kind of coined but it might be different characters, I have no idea. Next thing I miss about China, fake markets and being able to bargain for your items when you go shopping. It's, it's, this is fun. This is just fun, okay? So Shanghai and big cities in general have a lot of fake markets, also fabric markets is another place where this happens where, you know, the sellers will, I feel like they will hike up the price if you see that, if, if they see that you're a foreigner. Foreigners are, you know, perceived as being wealthier than the average Chinese person and they generally are. So, you know, if they see a foreigner coming into their shop, they, they know that you have cash to spend and um, if you're a little inexperienced, they are going to hike up the prices for you. But the great thing about fake markets and fabric markets is you can always bargain and barter for the price to get a better deal. It's really fun. It's like you'll you'll go in and they'll tell you it's like San Bai Kuai Qian and then you're like, oh, Tai Gui Le, Tai Gui Le, uh, 150. Uh, um, and they're like, oh, 不行, 不行, 不可以, 太, 这太低了. Um, and then you'll be, you'll ask like, 最低价, and, and they'll be like, oh, 最低价, uh, 两百块钱, and then you'll be like, no, 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 and walk away, and then they'll chase you down and say, 好的, 好的, 一百八, you know? <laughs> Um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's really fun and um, yeah, I think it's, it's kind of part of why these fake markets are so popular because, you know, you, you get to flex your little, little bartering muscles there and um, yeah, very fun. <laughs> so if you go shopping, if you go traveling in China and you go to a fake market, brush up on your Mandarin and make sure, just, you know, really push on those prices, really push on those prices. Like I would start with offering them half the price of what they tell you and and you know you'll be able to kind of go from there and just see what the limits are but the better chinese you speak the lower price you're probably going to be able to get because they're going to like see that oh like this person's been in china a while they know what they're doing they're not going to fall for this like they're not going to pay me as much as i want them to pay me you know like they're they're not they're going to realize they can't really like blow up the price that much because you you know some things, so <laughs> there's my tip for you if you ever go to China to a fabric market or a fake market or anything like that is um, start at 50% of what they offer you and go from there. Oops, uh, I've got some fallout happening. I'm kind of doing the no foundation thing recently, partly because I don't really feel like I need it and partly because I've started having allergic reactions to my foundation, so I'm just trying to keep it, keep it on the down low with the foundation. I'm gonna buy a new one eventually, like a really light coverage one, maybe one of the milk makeup ones or, or like something like that. And just like a really hydrating foundation and see if that's better, like a skin tint type of situation. I'm also having my eye on the one from Urban Decay. It's like Hydro something, Hydro Maniac or something. Kind of want to try that one. So mad, so mad that Urban Decay discontinued Naked Skin. I loved that foundation. Whew, I am looking lifted. Take me to church. Okay, this look is so good. I'm kind of recreating something that I saw on Instagram or trying to at least partially, and I'm super, super happy with how it's turning out. Love these colors. Where is my powder? Why is it? Oh, there it is, okay. <laughs> I really couldn't find it, it was hiding. I was like, no, don't use me, don't touch me, I don't want to die. Calm down. Whoa, I've never looked better, I swear. I gotta put more lip balm on. My, 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 my lips have already soaked up all of the balm that I caked up onto them and I don't want my lipstick to look all dry. This video is gonna be so long. I can I can sense it between the makeup and all the constant talking. It's gonna be forever long, but fun and good. I hope you're enjoying it so far. I'm really bad about keeping my workspace organized. I lose my brushes <laughs> so much. My next thing that I really, really miss about China is that everything is open all the time. I swear to God, I cannot handle 
Germany with the whole like everything being closed on Sundays and everything closing early on Saturdays. It drives me mental. I, I, I it's from like a worker's perspective, I get it. Like you're pretty much guaranteed at least one free day per week, but it's just so annoying. So like in Germany, Sundays, like there's no supermarkets open, there's no shopping malls open, it's only like restaurants and, and like parks and kind of leisure, like family activities, things that you would do for leisure on the weekend, but but you know, grocery stores and, and malls and things like that are not open on Sundays. It, 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 and everything usually closes earlier on Saturdays as well. In China, everything's open all the time. Like malls don't open early in the morning, I feel like. I feel like maybe they open like around nine-ish, something like that. It's different, it depends. But like malls close at like 11 o'clock at night. Most malls here probably close around like nine. China has way, way more like 24 seven convenience stores. Shopping malls aren't really 24 seven, but they're open like almost around the clock. They're open pretty early in the morning and go way really late at night. And I don't know, it's just fun. It's just like, there's a lot more possibilities. The only time of year when everything is not open in China is Chinese New Year. It's insane what happens in Shanghai on Chinese New Year. It's like, it turns into a ghost town. You go out and there's like no cars on the road, no people on the street, everything is closed. And it's like, where's the zombie apocalypse? Like, where are the zombies? It's, it's what has happened. Everyone is gone. Everything is dead. <laughs> but no, it's just because there's so many migrant workers in Shanghai and like, you know, people who left their hometowns in the middle of nowhere from the countryside and they came to Shanghai to open up a small shop or to work as, you know, like a construction worker or as a taxi driver or as a whatever. And Chinese New Year is like the one really, really major, really important celebration for Chinese families. It's, it's like kind of like Christmas for Christians. It's like the one celebration a year where you have to be with your family. So all of those migrant workers, they go back home. And it's just like, everyone disappears. There's, there's nothing open anymore. There's no one anywhere anymore. Everybody goes back home. You're lucky if you see a single person on the street when you go out. It's it's, it's really weird. It's, it's kind of eerie, but also like, just a very interesting <laughs> sort of phenomenon to observe. Um, so yeah, I always get like really weirded out, but it's it's, it's kind of fun to, to see how like everything just, just shuts down for Chinese New Year for a few days. It's really, yeah, it's a it's an interesting sight to behold. It's <laughs> just like this huge bustling city of everything happening all the time, constantly, just suddenly being totally empty, just like ghost town. We interrupt this segment to ask if you noticed my Chinese fan earrings that I'm wearing. I got these in a pack of like, I don't know, 10 pairs of earrings from H&M for Chinese New Year. They're super cute. I've got ones with like little little envelopes and fans and, and red tassels and all kinds of little Chinese traditional symbolism things. <laughs> Uno momento, please. I am adding my highlight. Pink, purple, or blue highlight accents. Let's try purple. I was gonna do blue, but I changed my mind. All right, and I could use both. This is dirty. I'm leaving on a jet plane. Don't know if I'll be back again. Those lyrics are totally wrong because I don't know this song, but I kind of get the gist. Hmm. Did I say purple? I think I said purple. I want to do pink here and maybe like purple here. Yeah, let's do that. I'm so glad Kat Von D doesn't own Kat Von D Cosmetics, Kat Von D Beauty anymore so that I can feel guilt-free about using her products. We don't support anti-vaxxers here. Don't, don't come for me. My mom's watching the Gilmore Girls. I'm so happy. It's such a great show. The intro of this video was such chaotic energy. I was like not ready to be filming, but so I hope the intro doesn't discourage people from watching. Cause I think, I think I've shared some, some golden pearls of wisdom, nuggets of golden pearls. <laughs> I have that song stuck in my head that's like in Japanese that's going all all over TikTok the I don't speak Japanese. Next thing I miss about China. Taobao. Yes, Taobao is king. Taobao is is the best thing ever. So Taobao is like 
It's kind of like Amazon slash eBay, but like way better. <laughs> there's so many sellers. There's so many different things, so much variety. You can literally get anything. You can, there's clothes, there's food, there's, there's cosmetic products. There's like all kinds of weird imported goods. There's like anything you want for super cheap prices. Lots of fakes lots of fakes you, you can't guarantee quality here but oh my god it's it's just it's so convenient and and it's just like you get you can get anything you want literally anything you want i mean it happens to me often that i'll be looking for something specific that i need and i'll look it up on like amazon or ebay and i won't find what i'm looking for but i will always find what i'm looking for on taobao and sadly it's not as easy to shop from Taobao if you don't live in China. I think you can if, if you really wanted to, but I don't know, I just it's not worth the effort for me right now, but I do definitely miss being able to shop on Taobao. It's, it's super easy, super convenient. So many things going on for really good prices. If you live in China and you aren't sure how to like open a Taobao account or your Chinese isn't great and you kind of have a hard time shopping on Taobao, there's this thing called Bao Pals, which can help you. They can like place the order. You pay them and they place the order for you and they'll just like get everything handled for you. Um, it's really great. So yeah, little, little pro tip there. I did have a Taobao account, but I usually ordered through Bao Pals just cause it was easier. I kind of just like used my Taobao account to make my wish list and that was it. I want to contour. Did I not bring my contour palette here? Yes, I did. I'm gonna regret this. Not. The next thing I miss and that has, I feel like really changed in my life since leaving China is being part of a community. Being part of a community in Shanghai was really easy. It was really easy to like find your tribe and find your people and feel like you were part of something, part of a, a community of people, part of a, a kind of family, especially in like, there are like little beads of talcum powder in my armpits. That's gross, ew especially like in the expat community, because I feel like every foreigner who lives in China kind of has a mutual understanding of each other. You can be completely different people, have completely different values, beliefs, hobbies, interests, whatever, but you all kind of like understand each other on some level because we all share similar frustrations, but similar love for China. And it's, I don't know, you, you kind of like, foreigners gotta <laughs> stick together and like there's a lot of of pubs and bars and parties and events and things tailored to lao wise <laughs> and um you always felt like you were part of something or i always felt like i was part of something like i remember when i was like 16 17 and i was just starting to like come out of my shell and try to like find my people i don't remember how but i stumbled upon this event called queer talks because I was just starting to get into like LGBT stuff. I was kind of coming out of my shell as a bi person and I didn't know any LGBT or I didn't know a lot of LGBT people. And I just wanted to meet some people, find out more and just like kind of find my tribe. So I found out about this event called Queer Talks and I went and it started being like a once, I think it was like a once or twice a month kind of thing. And we would meet at this place called Cambio Coffee and we would sit and there'd be like, you know, 20 people or so huddled together. We'd all grab a coffee and every time it was like a different topic relating to the LGBT community and LGBT issues. And we would sit there and just talk about it and just discuss and be there for each other. And, and there were like mediators and everyone had a chance to speak. And it was really nice. And through those people, like some of them were performers and singers and actors and artists and stuff. and. So I made friends with those people and then I got into the performance community and I started doing, you know, I was just started showing up at, at places and, and I found out about some like events that were happening, some um, talent shows and things and I participated in those and I it was just so easy to build a network of people, to, to network and to meet people and to get involved, to get into a group and like become a part of something and, and get to this place where like all of the places that I loved going, I would never feel alone there because everywhere I went, I would always just randomly come across somebody I knew. <laughs> and um, that was really nice. And I feel like in Germany, it's just, I mean, it, it's, it's again, I, I don't live in the city here and maybe in the city it's different, but even from what I've heard from like other expats living in Hamburg, it's just not as easy to make friends and meet people here as, as, as it was for me in 
Shanghai. So that's something that I really miss is just like having a community of people around me and having friends to meet up with and things to do. My hair is starting to unravel. Whoops. Just, just, just ignore this. <laughs> ignore me being a hot mess. <gasps> Don't tell me my bronzer is not here. Oh my God, my bronzer is not here. Let me go. I gotta go get my bronzer. You can't see this, but I'm wearing this like super cute dress with like pajama pants on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> for the for the sake of, of transparency. Relating to the last thing I said about being part of a community, the other thing I miss about China is that there's always something going on. There's always something to do. It's, it's never boring. There's always like, there's so many parties, there's so many pubs and bars, there's always these events for like all different kinds of people, whatever kind of music you like, whatever kind of stuff you're into. There's dance classes, there's healing arts festivals, there's meditation and yoga retreats, there's, you know, wine, wine and drink and paint, paint and drink, y you know? <laughs> there's so many different things going on. And you know, once you kind of become established in a community once you kind of network a little bit and you meet some people and you start finding out about the stuff that's going on you will never be bored you'll have like endless supplies of fun events to choose from and fun activities and and parties and whatever you like whatever you want to do you're you're it's going to you're going to have a hard time deciding which one to go to because there's always like things simultaneously happening in in different parts of the city where you can just like you know have fun, be yourself, experience something new, do some art, see some art, talk to some people, sing with some people, do drama stuff, comedy stuff, all kinds of things. Shanghai really does have like a, a very, um, a very healthy, very extensive, arts community, performance community, LGBT community. There's quite a few like gay and lesbian bars in Shanghai. There's a lot of places where they host different arts events. It's all really, really fun. Never boring, never a dull day, never nothing to do. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna finish up my makeup. I'm almost done. I'm kind of out of things. Let me call my mom and see if, if she has something to say. Wait. Okay, so my mom is here hiding very, very terrifiedly away from the camera. <laughs> um, I'm gonna finish my makeup. She's gonna, <laughs> she is, don't make me mess up my makeup. This is go going so well. Just let me, let it, let it, let me be. But I want you to tell the people what you miss about China. Maybe there's some things that I didn't say. I miss my friends. You miss your friends? Yeah. I miss my friends too. And I and yeah. and the kindergarten. And I miss my big house. Ugh. Yes. We had such a big house. We lived in a huge house with three rooms and two bathrooms and an attic and a walk-in closet and security guards <laughs> and trees. It wasn't that big, hmm? but it was my house. It was nice. I need setting spray to make this highlighter stick to me. You can sit there and think. I will cut out all the awkward silences, so. Mm. I miss Starbucks. Do you have Starbucks? No. Germany has Starbucks. No, but it's no good. Yeah, tiny, tiny villages don't have Starbucks. <laughs> Do you think there's the Starbucks is different here? I miss my city bike. How can they have that in Hamburg? They have like like bike sharing things and I'm, I'm tax. Ugh. Oh, you ordered Olama. I ordered Sherpas. Mm. I miss all the all the restaurants. There's so many like Shanghai has restaurants from every culture imaginable. So many different like cuisines and stuff, and they all deliver. McDonald's delivers twenty four seven in China. Oh my god, that that was a lifesaver for me for so many like you know midnight hungry wanderings and being able to go to Kwai Ke and buy Ritter Sport at four in the morning. I am glowing. I feel like this highlighter placement is totally different from this highlighter. No, I don't know. <laughs> Still thinking. Mm. Are you be being sad? Can I go now? Are you out of things that you miss about China? Talk about mm. your your seamstress. Mom had a seamstress who would make her clothes for her. She was nice. She was always buying us watermelon. 
<laughs> That's cute. Thank you for sharing your perspective on the issue of I missing saw the pretty pretty trees. The pretty pretty trees? Mm -hmm. Where were the pretty trees? Everywhere. China has beautiful trees. Mm, no, Vietnam has beautiful trees. China has Vietnam has very beautiful trees too. China doesn't have that many trees. I miss the tropical fruits. You just don't pay attention to them. All right then. I miss the tropical fruits. You could buy, you could buy pomelo, yaozi, and how do you say dragon fruit in Chinese? I miss going to all the cool concerts. Yeah. Although the cool concerts were always in in danger of being shut down if they like didn't agree to change their their <laughs> controversial lyrics or stuff, or omit certain songs. Wasn't Aerosmith cancelled? I think Aerosmith uh, was gonna come and then they got cancelled. We didn't go to the Rolling Stones. That was so stupid. But we went to Metallica and we went to Queen and we cried like little babies. And we went to Adam Lambert. Adam Lambert and Queen both, like Adam Lambert with Queen and also just Adam Lambert without Queen. <laughs> and we went to Pink Floyd. What? When did we go to Pink Floyd? How old was I? No, when I was little, we went to Eric Clapton. Clapton. We went to Pink Floyd? Yeah. And I don't remember it? <sighs> like the pine cakes. <gasps> How old was I? I can't believe we went to Pink Floyd and I don't remember it. <gasps> remember cats? Oh my god, cat. Oh my god, the theater. The theater. Cats. Phantom of the Opera. We didn't go to Limis, did we? Did we go to Limis? Yeah. We did? We went to sh so many good shows. Two C's. Two C's. <laughs> so there we are. Tropical fruits. Not done talking about the tropical fruits. You have year round pomelo, coconut, lychee, pineapples, dragon fruit. Anything you want, they got it. Anything you need, they got it. Anything you bet that. You can't stop on me. I don't know the lyrics to that song at all, but it's cool. It's a it's a cool song. I love Yolandi. She is nuts, but awesome. <laughs> All right, girls and boys, I am going to finish up my lips, and then we will be done with this video reminiscing about the best things in China that we all miss very much. I should start annotating like whatever random songs I randomly start singing in these videos. So I feel like some people won't know them and we'll be just super confused. My computer is starting to make breathing noises, which is a sign that it's tired of recording my audio. I'm still not sure if this lip shape is like natural looking enough where you just like, you know, draw over the Cupid's bow. It looks really cool, really nice uh, until you figure out what's going on and then it's like, hmm. I see you there. You you fool. You liar. I feel like I want a lighter color in the middle or something. Or something. I don't, I'm gonna put some gloss. That's what I'm gonna do. Ooh. Haven't used this in a while. And we almost forgot mascara. <laughs> Unfortunately, my eyelash curlers are missing in action, but we will we will survive without them. I feel like I did it. I, I overdid it with the lips. <laughs> I'm starting to doubt my my choices here. All right, we're done. Alrighty guys, that was it for today's video. I want to thank you for joining me and letting me reminisce about the things that I loved and missed the most about life in China. You know, there are reasons why we left and there are reasons why we want to go back. <laughs> you know, when you leave a place that you've lived in your whole life it's 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 always gonna be hard there's no two ways about it there's gonna be things you miss there's there's gonna be days when you just you just wish you could go back um i don't know if i ever will live in china again maybe maybe not um it depends on a lot of things and yeah i remember my time in china very fondly i miss it very very much but i also know that i need to learn to build a life somewhere else so you know i'm trying to make the most of europe I don't know if I'll stay in Germany, probably won't. <laughs> probably gonna go somewhere uh, warmer and sunnier and less strict. I feel, like, I feel like Germany is very like, very strict. People are quite 
quite sort of like set in their ways and and I, I, I don't know I'm I, there's a lot of really nice people in Germany but it's just like cultural norms and society here it's a little bit like you know you gotta you gotta get with the program a little bit it's all it's also good it's like it's still quite like an accepting sort of country it's just as a foreigner you're kind of expected to just like act like the Germans do and and be the way you're supposed to be and then kind of like you know. So again, thank you all so much for watching this video. And if you want to know more about life in China or life in Germany or why we left or why we're here or anything like that, just leave those questions in the comments down below and maybe I will make a video about it. If you want to see more videos on lifestyle, wellness, beauty, and sometimes China stuff, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell, the notification bell down below to be notified every single time I upload. <laughs> And if you want to follow me on my other social media, all of the links are down below as well. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!